Hey guys, just want to give you another quick update on the project. I've been working really hard mostly on preparing this for submission for Epic. I've been going through uh, renaming all my assets, changing the folder structure, doing a bunch of stuff and just a general overview of a lot of the old code that's been months and months since I've seen it. Uh, so a lot of little improvements here and there. Uh, and one of the improvements was I actually had created this enemy a while back um, and I call it a tank base. So if you recall, um, Star Fox and, and pretty much games like that have ground enemies that are pretty much mobile on the ground. They look like little tanks. Um, so this was created a while ago and it was kind of left there uh, and I didn't further develop it. My original idea was, and you can see here, there's a socket here. Uh, when, it, when it spawns, it'll actually spawn a turret on top. Uh, and you can then, you know, the enemy can move around and the turret will basically do what every other turret does. It'll follow your movement, it'll shoot, etc. Uh, but at this stage of the game, my, you know, my original plan was to create a brand new behavior tree for ground enemies, moving ground enemies, restricting the movements on, you know, a 2D plane so they couldn't fly off. Uh, but I made the decision that instead I was going to just convert this to a flying enemy uh, because I think it just gives you more flexibility. So now... Even though this is supposed to be a tank, uh, I converted the parent um, class to a full-on flying enemy. So now, um, because of the flying enemy, you pretty much have all of the logic now available to it. But instead of just shooting at you, now you have this little flying tank that has a turret on top flying around. Kind of like the, the, the carriers, but the carriers obviously are massive, have three turrets. This guy's a lot more nimble and has only one turret. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that because uh, it kind of looks like a boat. And if you if I go back to Corneria here, uh, let me go back to game mode. You'll see that obviously I've added some things since the last video. Um, added some rocks, um, you know, just to give it a nicer look. I've added these uh, things. They're called um, point cache. Uh, basically, you hit it, and in this case, five times, and it actually give you points little things and, and they move around right you can specify the speed um i've you know included things like this uh that has a spe uh, special component component add points and component on hit use physics again i'm trying to showcase all the different things in one level right so when you play this level you should see almost everything that the project has to offer working in tandem the only thing i'm not obviously showing are the different game modes and things like the um the procedural asteroid field because it just wouldn't make sense in Corneria, but everything else is here. Um, so you have, you know, this is just a mesh with a hover component and a rotate component. So you'll see it like slowly rotate. Uh, and these are just components that I've showcased before. Uh, but what's really excited here is that um, I created a little patrol route. Whoops. And I'm just gonna select it here. You can see here. Uh, so I'm using this, um, almost like a little boat so i created a little patrol and i have three of these guys following the route and you can you see one two and three and you can see that when you start the game here this guy's gonna start next to you and he's gonna kind of like you know sail almost next to you and the tourist gonna be shooting at you and you're gonna see um you know these guys kind of avoid obstacles he's gonna get real close to you then he's gonna go far then he's gonna go ahead and avoid these mines and loop around and, and get really close to your face here uh, so really nice effect. It, I feel like it adds quite a bit. Um, so let me let me show you what that looks like if I just hit play here. I'm, I'm going to play uh, in all range mode right now. But just to give you an idea of what that looks like. And you can see that the guy is kind of going around, looping around. And you can see the guy in the back. And now he's crossing over, and you can see the turret is kind of good. So really neat. Um, you know, just another enemy type, and obviously you can choose any behavior. So this guy could be, you know, going on the volume, uh, like, like the saucers here, or he could be following you around. Pretty much it's just a random enemy. Um, but now you have, you know, the option of having an enemy with a, an additional turret. So you can destroy the turret separately, or you can choose not even to spawn a turret. 
Uh, you can see that there's specific options for this enemy here. If you do want to spawn the turret, obviously, then you can choose basically the same thing. What kind of uh, weapon type, projectile type, damage, and fire rate. Uh, so really cool. But the really, really big thing uh, besides this, I think I'm really, really excited about is uh, even more efficiency on the AI. And this is actually huge for mid-range machines. So if you recall last, I think last video or last two videos, I showed um, a new behavior, which is uh, there's an inactive distance here. Uh, so basically, if the player is really, really far away, the AI would just become inactive. Uh, so the idle behavior could be going you know, in a random direction inside the volume or it could be following a patrol, um, right? And before that, it would just do its idle behavior no matter where the player was. Uh, that takes a toll, right, if you have a bunch of enemies. So having the inactive distance basically meant if the player in this case is farther than 100,000 units, unreal units, from this enemy, he won't even patrol the route. It'll just remain inactive, idle. So that's even less strain um, on the game. However, the next step was, well, why, why does it even have to stay idle, right? So I added a self-destruct option here. Uh, and you can see it's ticked by default by, on the base class. So again, as you're play testing, right, all these new options come up and, and it wasn't really even that hard to implement. But basically the logic is, if the if if the player hasn't reached the enemy right so if the enemy starts off far from the player like really far into the distance there it'll start as inactive right at some point the enemy will become active because it'll detect the player based on the sensing distance and it'll either do something and you know uh, it'll either engage or it'll stay idle in this case the engage behavior just ignore player right so it'll just keep doing its idle behavior However, at some point, the player will move past the enemy and keep going, right? Because this is supposed to be a track, if you can see here, right? So the enemies that are here, like this, like this uh, tanks or boats, um, will eventually activate, and then the player will go really, really far, and it'll automatically deactivate after your 100,000 units. So now, if that's the case, um, then instead of just deactivating, it'll just self-destroy. Um, so a lot more efficient now because you can see there's a lot of enemies here uh, a lot of little saucers here that are flying around even if they become inactive it's still a behavior tree that's running in the background even if it's just checking a boolean and saying yep just stay inactive stay inactive it's still a load on the game so now as you're going through your level literally and i'm going to show you that in a second here as you're going through your level through the track here and you're getting far enough to the enemies the enemies are automatically self-destroying. Um, so it's, you know, I have a really good card, so you probably won't see a lot of difference here when it comes to the draw, uh, draw calls and FPS. But if you have a mid-range machine, it makes a huge difference, right? Because now you have a bunch of enemies that are far that have not spawned. Remember, you can, you can now choose to spawn an enemy based on proximity. So a lot of the enemies all the way in the back of the level haven't even spawned, so that's not a strain. Uh, as you're getting closer to those enemies in the back, they will actually spawn and become active and the enemies that you left behind will become inactive and will self-destruct. So you have this rolling um, almost wave of enemies. As you're moving through the level, they're spawning and the ones you left behind are destroying themselves. Uh, really, really neat stuff uh, to see and, and again, it makes sense when you're testing the level, uh, but when you're coding it at first, it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't come to you. So. Let me real quick, I'm just going to show, I'm going to turn on the music here so you can, you can get it. You're going to get a sneak peek at uh, the first half of Corneria. Um, it's still not done and the reason I haven't shown everything is because I'm still tweaking the controls for the track. The camera controls, I still don't feel are super smooth as I want to get them. Uh, so there's a lot of values that I'm still tweaking with the camera and the movement. Uh, but I still want you to see a really quick sneak peek here of what I'm talking about. Uh, and let me just um, go full screen here. So I'm, you know, in the middle of the game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and um, eject and show you how the enemies here are all uh, self-destroying themselves. So let's go ahead and start, and um, hopefully you like what you see here.
awesome. So what I was trying to show you there is that uh, all these massive carriers that were going around, all these um, saucers that were going around uh, randomly inside the volume, obviously all destroyed themselves. All of those enemies here, all of the saucers and the, the little boats, all of them basically self-destructed because you were over, you know, whatever distance in that case was 100,000 units. So uh, also note that a lot of the enemies that were here are from the enemy spawner here. They are actually spawning by proximity. You can see it on the, on the bottom right. So these enemies here that were really far didn't even spawn until, until you got to about this point in the level. Right, so you started the level with a bunch of enemies here. Almost no enemies were active here. All these enemies were inactive. And as soon as you get far enough, you, you saw there, uh, all of the enemies here in the ocean part destroyed themselves. And when you got far enough to here, all of the enemies in the Corneria area destroyed themselves. So really, really cool. Uh, it makes, in my opinion, a really, really big difference. I think now the system is robust enough that you can make a really long level with literally hundreds of enemies. And if you set it up right, right, if you set them up by by uh, proximity spawning and you make sure that they self-destroy when you're when you're far enough, you can you can do quite a bit um, in the system. So really excited. I'm going to continue working on this. There are still some little bugs here and there that I found. Um, but again, I'm getting closer and closer to uh, having this ready for submission. So. Hopefully you're really liking what you're seeing. I'm really excited. It's actually kind of fun to play. I've, I've, I've keep doing runs of it, right? Testing a bunch of things. And it's actually quite fun to, um, to play the level. So hopefully uh, the wait has been worth it. Uh, let me know what you think and I will talk to you later. Thanks a lot.